Welcome to my podcast, What the Fuck Spirit. If you made it past that name, this is going to be the podcast for you. This is going to be a no holds barred, no bullshit, open and honest conversation with Maria Leggett, and that's me, about all things spiritual. It's time to begin talking in an open and honest way about what spirituality is and what it is not. We're going to discuss all things woo-woo, witchcraft, spiritual, queer spirituality, medium versus psychic, energy healing, light work, shadow work, and any other bullshit that people want you to believe because it keeps them comfortable. It is time for you to grow. Let's go. Good morning, afternoon. I keep forgetting that, you know, we have this whole time thing. It is 12 o'clock and I'm getting ready to switch over my microphone. So it might go mute for a minute. (laughs) Oh, All right. I always forget I have these fancy microphones. So I want to make sure that I have the right settings for my audio in here. Scarlet. There we go. So now I'm on my good microphone. (laughs) Today I want to talk about, um, we're going to do some live card pulls. And I love doing live card pulls for people because live card pulls give me a way for people to see what it is that I do and that I love to do, which is handing out messages to people. So We're going to have some live card pulls today. Um, So if you want a card, just post below. Let me know that you would like a card pull and I'll be happy to pull one for you. Um, We're also going to talk about what it's like to be able to support your family, even though they may not have the same belief system that you do. And that came up for me this morning when I got dressed because I put on my uh, Bush School (laughs) sweatshirt. And I always laugh putting this on because... um, This is where my son went and got his master's, was at the Bush School in Texas (laughs) A&M. We have two completely separate belief systems. Hey, Jake, how are you, my darling? If you like a card, let me know. I'm going to start pulling live cards. Um, And I want to talk about the schedule for stuff that I have coming up. So post below, comment, let me know, hey, I want a card. Um, And I will be happy to put it on there. Just keep in mind that this is being recorded. It is a podcast. And um, so I don't get super um, down into intimate details just because it's live and it's public. If you want a private reading, you can go to marialeggett.com and book with me. I'd be happy to do that. Um, So here's what we have coming up. June 16th, we have Let's Talk About Death. This is a free class that I'm doing. It's a free sit down where we're just going to sit down and talk about death. I'm a I'm an end of life doula as well as a medium. So I get to see death from both sides. Um, and so I want to talk, start talking about death so that we can normalize things. And this is a free thing that you can come to. You can either do it online or you can come and show up to find me in the woods on June 16th. We're doing it Friday night. Um, June 19th is Monday meditation. I'm doing this all in Mondays in June. I'm doing it through my temple, temple of the sacred circle.org. And, um, you can do these Monday meditations with me, or you can just watch the replays in order to see these. You have to join the community at temple of the sacred circle.org. Um, June 23rd, if you're in the Dayton area, I'm doing a spirit hour at Temple of the Rebel Goddess. And this is where everybody who comes in, I only allow 10 people to come in and everybody who comes, I give a message to. So everybody's going to get a message and I believe there are still some slots open and that's going to be next Friday, the 23rd. And then Saturday morning at Temple of the Rebel Goddess, June 24th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., I am going to be doing mediumship development circle and this is an open circle. So it's drop in. People can just come in and just because you want to try and see what it's like, see what it's like to work with a medium, see what it's like to work with your own mediumship because everybody has this ability. Um, And then July 11th at Temple of the Rebel Goddess, we are doing mediumship 101 again. This is going to be on Tuesday night. So I'm so excited to do this again. And then um, I have released four of the five classes for Spirit Guide 101 The first class is the foundations. The second class is elementals and spirit animals. 
The third class are ancestors and angels. The fourth class are ascended masters and deities. And the fifth class I'm working on right now are star seeds and soul groups. And um, all of those can be found at templeofthesacredcircle.org. So Jake, I see you said you're between clients. So let me know that you're still there and I'll pull for you. Um, and Kate, I see you too. I will pull for you as well. Just let me know. So we have these beautiful cards. I'm going to use these are self-care wisdom cards by Cheryl Richardson. Um, these cards have really been calling to me lately. And so I'm going to use them again. All right, Jake, here we go. What card does Jake need today? Oh, Jake, we got it popped right out for you, my darling. Here we go. It is choice. And I love how we have all these key holds, right? It says worry less about making the right choice and more about being strong enough to handle any outcome. So my friend, for you, this is going to be do what is right for you and what you know is right. And stop worrying about what other people think because it has to come from in here. What you're comfortable with, what you want to do, that is so much more important than anything else. So I hope you <laughs> feel attacked, right? <laughs> this is how it goes with cards, man. Even these nice, gentle oracle cards. Boom. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you resonate with it, my friend. <laughs> so I, I adore you and I cannot wait to see you Saturday for lunch. All right. Kate Silva, are you still there, my darling, so I can pull you a card? I want to make sure that people are still on here so I can pull cards for you. So if you're just joining, I am pulling cards today as part of my podcast. So please feel free to comment below and say, yes, I would like a card. Um, I'm just waiting to see if Kate Silva is still on here because she had said she wanted one. Hi, Diana May. Absolutely. I will pull a card for you. I'm just waiting to see if Kate is still on um, because I know that people have to come and go. So if I don't hear from Kate, then I'm going to pull for Diana May. Okay, Kate. Awesome. Here we go. All right. And then Diana May, you'll be next. So let me write this down so I don't lose track. Kate and then Diana May. Okay. All right. Here we go. So Kate, what card do we have for you? What does Kate need to know today? Here we go, darling. We have change course for you. And here's what it says. A closed door is an invitation from life to move in an even better direction. It's time to change course. And the interesting thing was I saw these three keys. And whenever I see keys, especially three of them, I want to talk about Hakate. So I don't know if you work with Hakate or not, but you might want to reach out to her to see if she wants to work with you. So there's that. So anybody who is watching this, please like this video, share this video out to let people know that I am doing the podcast, that I am doing the card polls. Um, it helps me to stay in your algorithms when you comment, share, like, all the things. So thank you very much for that. Victoria, hello, my darling. How are you? Would you like a card? All right, Diana May. Totally up, going to do yours now. Here we go. All right. So for you, Diana May, here's what we have. We have this beautiful change card and it's in a heart, which I love. So this says a resistance to change is a resistance to life itself. Open your heart and mind to new beginnings. So I know that some things in spirituality um, and things that happen around us, we can kind of be closed off to change because it threatens our sense of security. It threatens our sense of safety. I don't feel safe when X, Y, Z happens. And so if you're receiving this card, it is time for you to realize that you are in control of much of your circumstances, meaning you're in control of how you react to things. 
You may not be able to control what goes on outside of you, but you can control how you react to them. So spirit is asking for you to just be open to new ideas, be open to new things, and you never know what beautiful thing is going to come for you and to you. So many blessings to you, Diana May. Thank you for letting me pull a card for you. Victoria. All right, Vicki, what do we got for you? All right, what does Vicki need to know today? Oh, Vicki, they're taking their time. All right, what does she need to know today? Are we doing this one or this one? Okay, today we're going, oh, here we go. Vicki, this is just for you, ease. Today, I allow life to be easy. Blessed be Diana May. Today, I allow life to be easy. It's funny because I'm getting this whole, I'm getting a little bit of the control thing going on, meaning we don't have to try and control the outcome of things. We can control how we react to things. And spirit says, um, I can very clearly hear the words, let your guard down a little. Because I see it as though like there's this shield of things for this is how I need my life to be. And spirit says, just lower it just a little to let in some of the light and some of the things that they're trying to feed to you. But you have such fierce protection around you that some of it cannot penetrate. So many blessings to you, my beautiful friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you resonate with that, Vicki. I am so glad. She says, wow, thanks. Life has been hectic lately. And yes, I am the queen of control, fix, and manage. I totally understand that. Me too. I get it. I get it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I am so glad. Is there anybody else on here who would like a card? I would be more than happy to pull a card for someone. Just shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. All right, if there's no one else, I'm going to pull one for the collective and then I'm going to start chatting. All right, so let's have one for the collective. What do we as a society need to know right now? For everybody who's listening to this podcast, whether it's today, tomorrow, a month from now, a year from now, what does the people listening need to know? Spirit's taking its time. Here we go. We got two cards. We have optimism and abundance. And this is for everybody. Okay, so I see Mary Beth, Carrie, and Angela. So yes, I will definitely pull for you guys. So we have Mary Beth and Carrie and Angela. Okay, so this is for the collective. These are the three that I have. If you're watching this video, please like it, love it, share it out with your friends, keep me in your algorithms. So here we go for the collective. We have optimism, which I absolutely love this. Look at all those little hearts. And the back of the story says, if you're going to make up stories in your head about people and circumstances, please make them love stories with happy endings. We know as humans, we are so good at making up stories about everybody else. And it's time for us to start making up stories with love and happy endings. Like literally you cannot make this shit up. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to let people live the lives that they want to live and love them, even if it doesn't match what we want. So we also have abundance. Look at that. Ching, ching. Here's what it says on the back of the card. Being a thoughtful steward for the money you already have is the secret to creating more abundance. When you trust yourself to handle more, that's when more shows up. So stay optimistic about all that money coming in. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> And make up those kind of love stories. I love all that money coming into my bank, spirit. <laughs> all right. Here we go. So now I'm going to pull for Mary Beth. Here we go, Mary Beth. Oh, thank you. I can see the likes and loves. I appreciate you very much, very much. And if anybody would like to, and it is absolutely not a requirement, it is optional, but if you would like to make a donation for your card pool for your message, you can send it on Venmo or Cash App to Maria Leggett Medium. All right, here we go. Mary Beth. 
Mary Beth, Mary Beth, what does Mary Beth need to know today, Spirit? Um, so I don't know what card it is and I still have my eyes closed, but here's the message that I'm hearing. For whatever reason, Mary Beth, I'm hearing to tell you to stand your ground and make sure that your foundation beneath your feet are very, um, that it's very steady and sturdy for you to stand your ground on. So that's the first message. Then we're going to pull this card, which is growth. I love how it's a little um, greenhouse. And on the back of it, it says evolution starts when you leave your comfort zone, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Ooh, and that has a lot to do with standing your ground, right? <laughs> I mean, think about that. Standing your ground can be very uncomfortable for some people. So it's really important for you to stand your ground and make sure that your voice is heard. Get out of that pattern of just letting things happen to you and knowing that you can control by using your voice. That is what you can control. So many blessings to you, Mary Beth. I hope you resonate with that. All right, Carrie. Carrie Smith. Absolutely. Here we go. All right. What card does Carrie need to know today? I don't feel like that one was it. It didn't fall. It started to. Here we go. All right. Oh, Carrie, I love this. Here we go. We have listen. And this is what it says. It says people start to heal the moment they feel heard. And um, spirit is showing it to me as though it's a two way street for you. You really at this point in your life really need to be heard. And that means that you need to open your ears and listen to the people around you. And it could be that you're having to listen to something that you don't like to listen to in order to speak up and use your voice so that they hear what you have to say. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you, but that's literally how I see this. So many thanks to you, Carrie. Thank you so much for allowing me to pull for you. Oh, good, Mary Beth. I'm glad that makes sense to you. And now we have Angela. All right, Angela, here we go. What does Angela need to know today? Um, so this is going to sound really weird. I'm hearing this something about backwards and your card just fell out, which is fine. Um, spirit keeps showing to me as though you feel our, or are saying I'm going backwards and spirit says, no, there is no going backwards. Um, you could do what they would consider retreat, but that can be a self care thing for the moment. There is no going backwards. Everything that happens happens for a reason. And they're just asking you to really step into trust for whatever is happening around you. So there's that. And let me pull a card for you. And here we go. We have happiness. And it says, your thinking will either make your happiness or take your happiness. You get to choose. So I hope you resonate with that, Angela, and many blessings to you. Is there anyone else who would like to have a card pulled? I've already pulled for the collective, so I'm just wondering if there's anyone else. Oh, good, Angela. I am so glad it resonates with you. My pleasure, my pleasure. I truly love what I do. I do all of this for a reason. Being a medium is one of my favorite things in the world because it means that I get to help people. Hey, Brie. Yes, I will pull one for you. All right. What does Brie need to know today? All right, come on. What does Brie need to? Oh, there it is. Okay. So here we go. It is action. And this is what it says. Baby steps are still steps and they're better than standing still. And spirit shows it to me as though um, taking baby steps every day is going to get you to the end goal, but sitting frozen and doing nothing is not going to help propel you to where you really have this desire to be. Um, and they're just showing me that it takes more action on your part. So I hope that you resonate with that. Many blessings to you. Is there anyone else who would like a card? 
I am happy to pull while I'm still sitting here. And I'm sure you guys can hear these cards sliding around back and forth. So I apologize for that. But the microphone picks up everything. Everything. So is there anyone else who would like a card? Oh, good, Brianna. I'm so glad that it resonates with you. Don't forget, like, love, share this video, help a sister out, get into your algorithms. Women supporting women, loving this. Okay, so if there's no one else who would like a card, I'm going to start talking about supporting people. So on our path, we are going to meet people and be related to people who may not necessarily believe in the same things that we believe in. And we don't need them to believe us. We don't need them to be our best friends on our journey. What we need is for them to love us unconditionally. What we need from them is to say, they can look at us and say, hey, listen, I don't believe that, but I support you. That's literally all we need. And this comes up for me this morning because you know, I put on this sweatshirt and I thought, well, I'm going to go do this podcast. And here's this thing that says the Bush school, which is the total opposite <laughs> of what I think and believe, right? Because it's, you know, the Bushes, it has everything to do with, with, um, political stuff. And I hate political stuff. However, I fully support my child, my adult child, who's almost 30, <laughs> who went to the Bush school and got their master's from there. And that's my son. And he and I have so many different beliefs, but we love each other anyway. There are times when we've gotten into some heated arguments about our opinions because no big shocker, right? I'm pretty opinionated. And so are my kids, all four of them, very opinionated. Um, and I would expect nothing less being raised by me at the same time. He may not believe me, but he doesn't sit there and say, you know, mom, I think what you do is stupid. He may think it in his head, but he never tells me that. And to me, that is support because you're not bashing me. You're not saying things about what I do and what you think it is. That is supporting me because I need to remember on this journey that I don't need my husband to say, Oh, you're amazing. I don't need him to go to every one of my events with me. I don't need my daughters to go, oh, mom, this is what we think of whatever. What I need is just for them to love me because we all have different belief systems. Um, and it's funny, like if you kind of pull my four kids, I'm pretty sure that they have their own separate belief systems. They may have some things in common. Um and my husband used to have a very different belief system than me, but slowly but surely he's kind of leaning into my type of spirituality, which is more open and just believing in spirit. And there's one source, but many, many facets of that source. And, you know, it occurred to me, and I even spoke about this when I was doing my very first um, lecture slash sermon in October of last year as a minister I was at the um, USCL, United Spiritualist of the Christ Light Church in Springdale, Ohio, doing a sermon. And I remember standing up there thinking, you know, I could be really upset about the fact that people that I am related to are not sitting in front of me because it's a combined, you know, in person and online. They could have even been online. And I have to remember in those moments that. They may not believe as I do. And because they don't believe as I do, I wouldn't expect them to sit in a church that they don't believe and listen to me talk about things that they don't believe. And it was such a beautiful, freeing moment for me to go, okay, I don't have to rely on them to validate me in what I'm doing. I love what I do and I am glad that I am sitting here at the same time. I also had students who were on the camera watching me, watching me do this, watching my debut as a minister. And I had beautiful, amazing friends sitting in the church, looking at me as I was standing up at the pulpit and delivering this lecture. And that 
help to fill my soul, knowing that I had a chosen family in spirituality who supported me and not all of their belief systems are exactly the same as mine, but they supported me. They came out and supported me and sat with me in the congregation and listened to me talk. And it was such a beautiful moment for me to recognize that I do not have to have DNA related people in front of me to validate what I am doing. And I think this is really important for everybody to recognize that if we don't have DNA family who support us on our spiritual journey, it doesn't mean that we don't have family. It means that we don't have DNA related people who may not support it, but we do have people who love us and will walk this path with us. And we have to recognize that it's not a failing on us and it's not a failing on our family. We are honoring each other for where we are in our belief systems. And that's really where I think that we need to be. I don't expect, while I would love for the entire world to be open to male, female, trans male, trans female, non-binary, I would love for this to be an open world where people would love and accept everybody for who they are, whether you're gay, whether you're bisexual, whether you're trans, none of that matters. And I don't mean that as in you don't matter. I mean, nobody should look at you for your gender, for your sexuality and determine whether you're a good person because of that. I would love for the world to get to that point, but I'm also a realist knowing that that may not happen. What I would love for us to get to is to not hate someone because of it. Just allow people to be who they need to be and the way that they need to be that person. You know, somebody who decides that they wake up one morning and and it doesn't work like this. So I'm using my words in inappropriately. I'm trying to figure out how to say this, that it makes sense. If I decide to wake up one morning and be honest with myself and the world and say, I believe, you know, all this time I've struggled with my identity. I have body dysmorphia. I don't like the fact that I have breasts. I feel like I'm missing a penis. If I wake up and I want to be a trans man, and it's not like I make that decision. It doesn't just happen overnight. These are things that go on in people's head and they struggle for years with this stuff. Most of the time before they ever even tell anyone. And so the fact that somebody has said something out loud means that you need to shut your pie hole and listen to what they have to say because they are trusting you in that moment and they are coming to you with this beautiful, vulnerable information and they are relying on you to love them through it. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. It doesn't mean that you have to like it. It doesn't mean that you have to support the fact that one day my son comes to me and says, I really feel like I'm a girl. It doesn't mean you have to like it, but it means that you need to love them and support them through it anyway. That is what is important. We need to stop hating people for what they want to be. It's not okay. And so I don't even expect for the world to say uh, we're open arms, loving and accepting. But by God, I think we should get to a point where we can say it's none of my business. What you do in your home is for you and what I do in my home is for me. I don't want people judging me because I'm a spiritualist minister. I don't want people judging me because I am a medium and I talk to people who are on the other side, but that happens to me every day. I will have people who are um, very conservative in their religious beliefs who will send me the most God awful things. They will post horrible things on my Facebook page. They will email me. They will private message me and say awful things about me. I am from the devil. I am a demon. I am, I mean, I've gotten all kinds of things like this and it's a reflection of where they are in their journey. And I cannot take that on. It is not my responsibility to worry about whether or not someone loves and supports where I'm at. I am here on this earth to perform a function. And my function here on this earth is to love people for who they are and where they are on their journey without judgment. It doesn't mean that judgment doesn't happen up in my head 
What it means is I fucking catch that shit before it comes out of my mouth and I actually say it. Because I still have some of the dogmatic shit that I was raised with in my head. And I and every now and then it comes up and then I will hear a judgment in my head and I go, ooh, Marie Michelle, what are you thinking? Absolutely not. So I go, all right, spirit, we're going to erase that thought from the Akashic Records because that's not who I am. I'm making a choice right here and right now to be different. And every minute of every day that you get, that you live and breathe, you have a choice to be different. Because I'm telling you right now, at 54, I am open and loving. When I was 15, I was prejudiced. I was rage prejudiced. It's what I knew. And at some point, I had to take ownership for my reaction and go, you know what? Is this my belief system or is this what I was raised with? And you have to step outside of that. So being able to step outside of this belief system and say, here is what I believe and being able to separate and pull apart what my grandmother's belief system, what my dad's belief system was, what my papa believed, what my mom believed, being able to pull out of there what I believed has been the hardest part of my entire life because they shared with me their truth. And I say shared with me, but it was put on me. And so I had to wear that truth. But it was their truth. And at some point, I finally realized this is no longer mine. And I shucked it. I just absolutely shucked it. And, you know, one of the things that I am proud to say is that my mother and I are at such a beautiful place in our relationship where she and I can say, okay, We disagree on this subject, but we can each say, this is what I think. This is what I feel. And they don't mesh, but then we just let it go and change the subject. And that's how it should be. My mother loves me, even though I am believe very different than her. And I love her, even though she believes very different than me. And I'll be honest with you. This is truly one of the best gifts I have ever gotten in my life because my mother and I were so polar opposite for so long. I didn't think there was hope. I just didn't think there was hope. And so I had to get to a place where I could forgive her and she had to get to a place where she had to forgive me because I had such open belief systems. I expected her to believe as I did. And I wouldn't talk to her until she believed as I did. What kind of bullshit is that? That makes me no different than what I had perceived her to be. And so I had to ask her to forgive me. Mom, please forgive me for me expecting you to believe as I did. We can exist and sit down and break bread and talk without having to have a massive blow up argument because we believe differently. She can see when I start to get a little red face, I can see when she starts to get there and we just go, you know what? This is probably not productive. Let's change the subject. Easy enough. And this is where the world needs to get to. The world needs to get to a place where we can have conversations with someone and support them. And I don't mean support their position. I mean, listen to them, listen to what they have to say, but then they have to do the same for you. Are you willing to be open and listen to me? And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to get to this place where we're opening up and listening to all the things that spirit is bringing to us. They're bringing us different opinions. And so I will take classes sometimes on things I already know just because I want a different opinion. And this is why I tell everybody who takes class from me, I'm going to teach you what I believe. Take what resonates and throw the rest of it out in the metaphysical garbage. I don't want you taking on something that you don't fully believe. I'll share what I believe, but I don't expect you to believe it. And a lot of this comes from, you know, we were raised in these older families, these older generations, at least from my age, Gen Xers and backwards. We were raised in families where it's do as I say, not as I do. 
And so you would watch these people say one thing, but go do something else. And it kind of teaches you to lie. <laughs> Not kind of, it does teach you to lie because you're saying, here's what I want you to do, but I'm going to go do something else. And a child goes, well, if you say that, but you do that, it means I don't have to do it. And that's what we learn. And I'm not saying this is my mom, my parents. I'm talking about with anyone raising a child. The way that children really learn from you is not from your words. It's never been from your words. It's always been from your actions. And so when there are children in the schools where my grandchildren go, who will bully one of my grandchildren. I know damn well it's coming from the parents. And then you have the parents who will sit there and go, oh, I never taught them that. I never said that. You may not say it, but if they see your actions, actions speak louder than words. There's a reason why that saying exists. Actions do speak louder than words. So this is why we have to start leading by example for the children to show them this is what we do. You know, my grandson comes in here and he goes, Mimi, your office feels more like a temple. And I said, it does. <laughs> and he said, yeah. He said, it feels good in here. It's peaceful. And I laugh because, you know, the, the rest of my house is an utter chaotic mess. And even though it's messy in my office, because it is, I'm not a neat freak, but the energy in here is clean and pure and beautiful. Yes, Karen, you're absolutely correct. Children learn at home. So this is why we have to start with our behavior at home. So my grandson knows when he comes in here that the energy in here feels different. So he loves being in here. He comes in here. I have a cat tree right here. Um, if you're on video with me, you can see I'm turning my laptop and you can see my cat looking right out the window. And he loves coming in here and hanging out and petting my cats and playing with them. And my cats love being in here with me. They just hang out on their tree most of the time. Sometimes they come and annoy me at my desk. But he knows because this energy feels good. And we have to start setting by example for our children to do what we want them to do. I did not. And I've told this to my children. I was absolutely not the parent that I would like to have been. I didn't have the tools to deal with my trauma. I didn't handle a lot of it correctly. And I've had to go back to them and apologize and say, I'm really sorry that I did X, Y, Z. Because some of it I was doing because it was what I was taught. It's what I knew. I didn't have any other kind of coping skills. You know, when you're raising children, they're triggering your childhood trauma. And that's where you're going to react from. You know, I, I absolutely hate that I'm going to admit this, but I spanked my children. I used a belt and I spanked my children because I got spanked with one as well. But so did my mom and so did my grandmother. Not an excuse. It's just what I did. And I've apologized to this for them. A, it's humiliating. And B, all you're doing is showing that I can, you know, physically overwhelm you. And that's the trauma that I'm trying to recover from as a child is being traumatically molested for three years where somebody overtook me and controlled my behavior. And then here I did it to my children by spanking them with a belt. Never should have done that. And so I have had to apologize to all of them. I was not the world's greatest mother. I wasn't a horrible mother. Although some of my kids might not agree with that. But in order to, I fully believe that we have to be honest about who we were and where we are. Because I can tell you right now on my journey where I am at is so different compared to where I was years ago. I am not even the same person today that I was 40 years ago, 30 years ago. God, not even five years ago after I started my spiritual journey. I'm a much different person. And we have to be willing to be part of the evolution of this earth. We have to evolve with the energy. We have to evolve with the things that are coming up. 
You cannot keep it the same and expect a different outcome. It's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. So we need to start setting better examples for the people who are around us, whether they're adults or children, I don't care who they are. We have to start setting a better example. And the best way to do that, number one, ask for forgiveness. Go to someone that you know you've wronged and say, I'm sorry. Being vulnerable in that moment, and they don't have to accept the apology. They do not. But you have to be willing to give it. And then if they don't accept it, you just have to say, okay, I understand. And don't get your panties in a twist. If they don't accept it, they're still hurt. That's where they are on their journey. You're healing. It doesn't mean that you're not progressing because somebody doesn't forgive you. That's where they're stuck in their journey. That is not your fucking problem. But if you're coming to them with a genuine apology and they don't accept it, just say, okay, I understand. And then you keep moving. Don't let it hold you back. You have to keep moving forward. Forgiveness is the only freaking way that we're going to move forward in this world. And that means by saying, okay, you don't believe as I do. I'm going to forgive you and love you anyway. And just keep moving forward. That is why we do what we do. It's why I try to use every platform that I have to talk about, this is where I came from and I'm no longer that person. This is who I am. And I still have to check my white privilege sometimes because I used to be that first one to say, oh, but you know, I was raised in a really poor blah, 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 whatever. I still have to check my privilege because there are people who never had opportunities presented to them that I have. And I don't know if it was because I was white. I don't know what it is, but I need to be open to the fact that I don't know what it was. So, all right, there's my soapbox. That's what I talked about. Is there anybody left on here who would like to have a card pull? I would be more than happy to pull one for you. Or if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I'll be more than happy to comment and talk about them. For anybody who's listening on the podcast, you can't comment, but you can email me if you want to. Hello at MariaLeggett.com. Absolutely. So we have Karen and Lisa. All right, Karen and Lisa. All right, what does, oh, Spirit's like you don't have all the cards, Shell. All right, let me get them. All right, so what does Karen need to know today? Peace, love, and forgiveness. And here we go. That's what I heard was peace, love, and forgiveness. I don't know why that's important. And oh, so here we have this self card. Love this, love this, love this. And in the back of it, it says, if beating yourself up worked, you'd be thin, rich, and happy. Try loving yourself instead. So Karen, your message is to try loving yourself instead. Maybe that's why I heard peace, love, and forgiveness. Starting to let things go and not holding on to them anymore. So many blessings to you, Karen. I hope you resonate with that. Sonora, absolutely. I will pull one for you as soon as I pull Lisa's. All right. So Lisa, here we go. What does Lisa need to know today? <laughs> okay. Yes. So <clears throat> Lisa, I hear mommy, I love you. I want you to know that I'm with you and holding your hand. Okay, so I'm going to have a card now. What card does Lisa, what card does Lisa need for today? This beautiful self-care journey deck. We're taking our time. All right, come on. What does Lisa need to know? They are, it's interesting. They're like literally not dropping one and they never do this. They know they have to drop one. Here we go. All right. Shine. 
oops, shine. Do not dim your light. The world needs your unique talents and gifts shine brightly. So Lisa, I hope you resonate with that. And thank you for your patience while the car <laughs> decided to come out. Oh, Karen, I'm so glad. Okay, so that's for Lisa. Kristen, absolutely, I will pull one for you. All right, so I'm going to pull for Sonora, and then I'm going to pull for Kristen. Okay, Sonora. All right, Sonora, what do you need to know today? Okay, Sonora, this is what it says. Surprise. I love all the beautiful glitters that's on the card. It says, release your expectations and be open to surprise. Um, I here's what I here's what I can tell you. I am feeling some um and I saw your post say that, you know, welcoming, inviting anger in is like putting cancer in your spirit, which is true. Um, but I definitely am feeling like some um, anger, frustration, anxiety right here in my chest. I can feel it super strong. Um, and spirit is showing it to me as though really just beginning to take time to breathe, breathe through when things are happening. Breathing in and exhaling slow, breathing in and exhaling slow. And when you're doing this, breathe in white light to allow in the peace, or you can see it as amethyst and light purple, whatever you want to do that's calming for you. So breathe that in. And then as you're exhaling, to exhale the anger, to exhale the things that are no longer serving you. So I hope that you resonate with that. I hope that, that made sense. All right. Thank you, Sonora. All right, Kristen, here we go. What does my beautiful friend Kristen need to know today? All right, are we talking about this one? Okay. So I'm being told to give you this one, priorities. And, oh, good. I'm glad it resonates, Sonora. And it says, here's what it says, Kristen, the quality of your life is determined by how you spend your time. Make sure your schedule reflects the life you want. <laughs> I literally feel like spirit just went, hey, let's call Kristen out. Um, so it is looking at your schedule and are you doing things that you love? Are you doing things that you're enjoying? Are you taking care of yourself, my friend? That is what spirit is giving you for a message today. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to have a card pulled before I hop off of here? I've done card pulls, put in my schedule, talked about supporting family, learning how to get along and love people. What are we doing today? Anybody else? Or are we done? You got to love that like 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 second space. Oh, Karen, I'm glad that you like these cards. So these cards are, it's called Self-Care Wisdom Cards by Cheryl Richardson. I like these cards very much too. I've been using them for like a week. They're really just giving me information that I need to support me day to day. So I am happy to share the author's name. Well, awesome. I am so grateful for all of you who watched this, who liked and loved the video, who shared it. I am beyond grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hopping on here with me. Um, if you want to watch any of the other episodes of What the Fuck Spirit, you can go to YouTube and find them on Temple of the Sacred Circle, or you can go to WTFSpirit.com. And you can listen to all of the past episodes. Thank you so, so much. I hope you all have an absolutely blessed day. Namaste.